welcome to God's Word for us that come Ghana's online Christian station. Be blessed as you listen to messages on the site. We lift up this hall as a memorial to you, as a sign of your faithfulness, as a sign of your never changing nature. And Father, we thank you for this milestone. Through it all, you have been our God. Through it all, you have been our rock, our fortress, our deliverer, our high tower, our bulwark. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Father, as we remember you today, I pray that you will cause the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable to you. Help me, Lord, to please you and you alone. Let the words that I speak be spirit and let there be life. And let there be transforming words, God, that will stay with us and that will change lives forever. Jesus, be lifted up and draw women and men to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. Well, it's a privilege to be here this evening, and it's a privilege also to be the vessel that God is using tonight to bring thanksgiving to him for Volta Hall. Amen. Um, this campus, and, and in particular this hall, evokes a lot of lovely memories for me. This is where I met my husband. <laughs> On the end block, in one of the rooms there. And um, this is where I had a lot of romantic walks. <laughs> and um, it also helped me nurture many wonderful, memorable, and um, indelible relationships and if you like memories i had friends in all these blocks around most of whom and some of whom i didn't know in high school but volta hall afforded us that and we were the hottest hall on campus it was the nerve center of everything and if you wanted a good wife it was from volta hall <laughs> And it also nurtured a good learning environment. I remember going sometimes to the reading room, sometimes coming here to my, my very good friend, Mr. Dubois, to have discussions. So walking in here gives me a lot of warm memories. But I don't need to come here to even remember. I'm forever thankful to God for putting me in Volta Hall of all halls. Because it gave me so much. I, I learned how to play in a team. I met God in a higher dimension in Volta Hall. I remember having a lot of uh, dawn broadcasts in Volta Hall, standing here with my husband and his group and calling people to give their lives to Christ. And people coming from all over in their 90s and households, crying and surrendering to Jesus. And uh, when I look back, I don't have any regrets, spiritually, academically, socially, romantically. Yay! I have no regrets. I thank God that I was able to maximize my time here spiritually. And um, I just decided to have a small meeting always in my room for all freshers. Because I saw that the evangelism on the campus was who went first. So you could be evangelized to jams, you could be evangelized to Christ, you could be evangelized to Baptist, you could be evangelized anyway. So when I came to form, uh, first year and I saw the wind that was blowing was very strong. So when God, by his grace, stabilized me, I decided every year to meet the freshers in my room, cut oranges for them and present Jesus to them. And uh, it's, it was a very fulfilling time in every way. And so I thank God for Volta Hall and it's wonderful wardens who would meet us and sometimes we'll have some tea times. Mrs. Akwe, 
Professor Odote, wonderful people, and Porter Donuts, all of them, you know, and I think Porter Donuts had a soft spot for my husband, so every time he saw the two of us, then he would smile. So it's been 37 years of good, good memories, and I thank God for Volta Hall being the, the channel through which God brought so many good things to me. I salute the hall and all the people who still work here to make it what it is. And I also salute the new generation. And it is my prayer that you will carry a good baton. Even though I'm told, you know, my daughter was here and she told me, you know, the name center has shifted. It's no longer your Volta Hall. But I believe that what is good is good. And what is good can remain good. Amen. Amen. And so congratulations to all of us. Congratulations to Volta Hall and all the people who work tirelessly to make it what it should be. And congratulations to the new breed of people in Volta Hall. And to God be all the glory. Amen. This evening, my sermon is supposed to be very short, half an hour, but God will help me. And our topic is nurturing women leaders for the next generation. Is, am I right? Yes. Okay. So, nurturing women leaders seems to put the honest on those nurturing but I beg to say that it is the person nurturing and the person being nurtured has a, a, a heavier honors on her than the nurturer. Amen. Amen. Now I looked up the word to nurture. It means to help the growth or development of, advance, cultivate, encourage, nourish, support, or endow. Now I want to say that nurturing, if you like, it's also a type of mentorship. And that starts with God. And it starts with laying a solid godly foundation for the nurturer and for the one to be nurtured. Because we have a principle in law that nemo dat non quod habit. You can never give what you do not have. So to be a nurturer, you must also have something to give. Amen? Amen? And if you don't have a solid foundation, or you don't have something that is stable or lasting, you cannot give that away to the next generation. Amen. 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 That is why the Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So if we do not have a solid godly foundation. What we do will not last. What we do will not be durable. And what we do will not endure. I can only preach from what I know and from what I've experienced. Like our moderator said, God is good and I am a witness. I have seen people nature from all walks of life and it is good. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is a bit skewed when all your nurturing is only corporate life, or all your nurturing is about only good things, or all your nurturing is just the professional life, because life has so many facets, and all of it comes together to make this thing you call life. Amen? Amen. And so if we are to be nurturers to nurture the next generation, then we cannot do anything if the foundations are weak or the foundations don't exist. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 15 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. 
and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid. Now, you know, we would all come with different things of what we think is a foundation. But the Bible says, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, why is the foundation Jesus Christ? Because heaven and earth will pass away. Even your words will pass away. Even if you are learning the research that you did. Later on, we find out that there were so many errors. And even when you did it, you left a margin of error. Because your things are not perfect. But there's a certain perfect person who built a foundation that is unshakable. And that lasts even through eternity. So I submit this evening that to nature and to be nurtured, we need a solid foundation. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Now, to be nurtured, you need to be somebody who follows. Amen. Amen. If you are going to be a leader, you must also be somebody who can be led. Amen. Amen. There is no leader who was also not led or is not being led or influenced by another. That is why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So Paul was a leader, he did great things, but it took him to follow somebody, a greater person called Jesus Christ. And then after that, he invites you and I to follow him. Amen. Amen. Now those who have successfully practiced the art of following are the ones who are nurtured and who nurture. Nations that have been rich for centuries have come into wealth because of the art of following. I remember many years ago when it was taboo to buy anything Japanese, anything Chinese, or anything Asian for that matter. We were told that it was an imitation. But nurturing is imitation. And nurturing is the art of following. Amen, somebody. Amen. The nations that became wealthy in the last 50 years are well known for their ability to copy. Indeed, many of their products were simply called imitation, or even toy imitation. They produced cars that were exact replicas of well-known European models. The Koreans had no shame in modeling their Daewoo cars after Opel, and the Sanyong after Mercedes-Benz, and the Hyundai after Toyota. Through their shameless copying, they caught up and searched forward until they became leading car makers. So if we too want to search forward as the next generation, we must not go back to reinvent the wheel. We must not use our lives as spiritual guinea pigs to find out that certain things are true. For instance, we always build on technology. Yes, the, the bell, the Graham bells and all made the telephone. But in making a mobile phone, you don't go back to pre-Graham Bell to prove that you are an explicit engineer. You build on what is there already and you search for it. Therefore, we need naturists to nurture the next generation so that they can also search for it. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm often asked, why is this not happening? everywhere, in churches, in the body of Christ, in life, in the corporate world. Why is nurturing, especially amongst women, not happening? I think that that is another sermon which I, I often preach about, but there's the, the, the sinking and the networking is not there. Because the generation to be nurtured does not think it has anything to learn from the generation before. But later, when their parents are no more, they'll be crying and saying, me ma, me But if only they would lay the right foundation and stand on the shoulders of the naturists, 
I think that the next generation will search forward and do well and also overcome the mistakes of the generation ahead. Amen. Amen. Now we saw the story of Ruth and Naomi and even the story of Esther. Esther was nurtured by Mordecai. The Bible says that her parents had passed away and Mordecai who was uh, a first cousin to her, an uncle to her, nurtured her. Now, in this modern world, the Mordecais are sleeping with the girls, the Mordecais are abusing the girls, the Mordecais are, are, are abusing their positions of power and influence, and it's not happening. Esther was a beautiful girl, but the person to nurture her did not take advantage of her. So a nurturer is somebody who sees and identifies something good in the next generation, but does not take undue advantage of them, but rather harnesses what is within. God has put something within each and every one of us. Now, why is it that nurturers do not nurture? Because sometimes we have the attitude that, sister, I have enough problems in my life before I'm going to take somebody else to look after, you know? And that attitude does not foster nurturing. It does not foster discipleship. It does not foster bringing people even to Christ. It does not foster selflessness. So if we are to be nurturers, we will need a selfless attitude and a selfless spirit. Amen. Now when Esther was going to be used by God for the next generation... She had gone into the palace and unfortunately she had forgotten about where she came from. So when Mordecai spoke to her, she said, you know, uh, things in the palace are different and because you are not royal, you don't know protocol. You know, so I can't do certain things. But when Mordecai spoke to her, she was somebody who could change her mind. Ask a person to be nurtured. Can you change your mind? Or are you so stubborn on your views and on your perspective that you cannot embrace the, the, the input of a nature? When you are like that, you are not going anywhere to happen. And when you don't go anywhere to happen, you don't affect just your generation, you affect the next generation. Because if Esther had not stood her ground, the whole Jewish nation would have perished. But she got to a place where she sent a message to Mordecai and said, go and tell him to fast and pray for me. And if I perish, I perish. In order to be nurtured, you must want it so much that you are prepared to pay a sacrifice, to pay a high price for where you want to go to. The next generation must be prepared to take up its cross and to follow, even in the things of God, the generation of today is, don't let me go empty-handed. We don't ask God what we can do for him. But we always ask him, God, what are you going to do for me? That attitude has to change. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Today, the only cross in Christianity is a necklace and a piece of jewelry. But a real cross of dying to self and dying to self-centeredness does not exist. But for us to be nurtured and to lead the next generation, we need a selfless, sacrificial, and a life that says, I deny myself for the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Now Ruth, whose story we read, also emulated a life of sacrifice. If it was this generation, you would look at your natural Naomi and say, what can she give me? One, her husband died. Two, her only two sons also died. She is a bad luck woman. She probably is operating under a curse. She is a witch. What can she give me? But the nature must also recognize something the nature must also recognize something in the natural that makes her want to pursue 
Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. So even though Ruth knew the physical status of Naomi, she knew that there was something more to Naomi than her affliction and her troubles. Amen. The world likes to define people by their problems. Even after God has delivered you, they will call you by your problems. Blind Bartimaeus was healed of his blindness, but today we still call him Blind Bartimaeus. The prodigal son came home, but we still call him the prodigal son. I mean, we, we, we just got the woman with the issue of blood was healed, but we still call her by her issues. And the world will never stop calling you by your issues. But to be a natural and to be nurtured, we have to rise above describing people by the difficulties, the tragedies, and the things they've been through. Because that is what rather gives them the credentials to rather nurture the next generation. For Paul said, I bear in my body the marks of a Christian. When you are in nature, you have things that show a mark. And it may not look so heroic, but therein lies the grace of God. Therein lies what God will use. And therein lies what you can pour into the next generation. Now, Naomi dissuaded Ruth. said, you know, don't follow me. Even if you follow me, I give birth tonight. When will the child grow? Before you have a husband. And Opa cried and left halfway. Because Ruth kept saying, go back, go to your gods, go to the house of your mother, go, don't follow me. I, I can't do much for you. But the nurtured pursues beyond problems, pursues beyond difficulties, pursues beyond obstacles, and pursues beyond things that cut them off. In our pursuit of even God, Things will not fall on your lap. You will have to keep pursuing. If God calls you in the ministry like he has called me, it's not easy to just get up, you just come and preach. People think ministry is just the pulpit, you just preach. But no, there's a lot of things behind the scenes. There are a lot of battles. There are a lot of times you feel like giving up. There are a lot of times you ask yourself if you had God. There are a lot of times you wonder if you have anything to give. But the word of God will always encourage you. Where do you go when you lose everything and you lose encouragement? Some people say, me, I'm a God. I can rely on myself. Really? The Bible says, cares to see who puts his trust in man. But when you put your trust in God, a certain supernatural strength will come to you, even when you doubt yourself. For when Naomi entered the city, as they read, the Bible says the whole city was moved because of them. And typical women who gossip, they said, the women said, not the whole city, the women said, is this Naomi? Sometimes people ask a question, it's not that they really want to know if it's you, but they are trying to say that you've changed so much with your difficulties that we cannot recognize you. So they said, is this Naomi? Hey, you must be Sandama. You know? But Ruth heard all these things, but it didn't deter her. And as she followed, she came to a place where she was a woman who could receive instructions. The nurturer has gone through so many things for you to be nurtured. The nurturer has seen so many things. That's why there's a proverb that the young man who is on the tree top sees not further as the old man who is sitting under the tree. Because sight is not just climbing a tree. Sight is more than that. And as they came to the city, Naomi was able to guide Ruth into a good place. She told her, I want to go and glean in this field. To be nurtured, you mean to be productive. Laziness and slothfulness does not take anybody anywhere. Amen? So the next generation must be a hardworking, diligent generation. Productive. I'm glad. I, I, I'm inclined to believe that none of us is sitting here, the younger people saying, oh, I just want to marry a rich man and I'll be okay. Even when you marry a rich man, in order to look after your resources, you need to be educated. You need to have a certain wisdom. You need a certain depth, even to maneuver this thing you call life. Amen. Amen. So God used Naomi to prepare Ruth. And God is using so many women around you to prepare you. But whether you will follow, 
And whether like Ruth, he will say, entreat me not to leave you. Because many times the nature will do things that will make you feel like, I don't feel like following. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you. Where you go, I will go. Your God shall be my God. You have to own the vision of the nature and add to it. Amen? Amen. Because the Bible says, the works that I do shall you do also and greater. So Jesus Christ expects us to be doing greater. So I want to encourage us as nurturers and those to be nurtured. We all have a part, a part to play. I've been giving only 30 minutes, so I want to be obedient and stick to it. But at the end of the day, I think that the ability to obey, the ability to submit to authority, which these days we see as how do I say it? Oppression. You know, when you are told, I say, eh, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are uh, taking away my human rights. You go into marriage, you go with your two hands, two right hands, because you know your rights. <laughs> Amen, somebody. And you know, some people come for counseling. Lady Reverend, we, we are not like our mother's soul. We are not like our mothers. Our mothers, they didn't have money. Our mothers they were not as educated. Our mothers did not have economic power. They do even now, we, we can make decisions for ourselves. But you don't know that your mother that you saw as illiterate, her self-control, her fruits of the spirit is what led her to where she is. And you will do well to humble yourself and glean from the lives before. Hallelujah. I myself am a product of so many natures. God never gives you just one nature because life is so wide, so big. One person cannot nurture you for the whole of your life. It's a baton that you pass from one person to another. But the greatest person who said, follow me, is Jesus Christ. And he said, when you follow me, I will make you. You will make yourself. I will make you fishers of men. Amen. So if we want to be anything... We have to come to the place where all is said and done. We say, Jesus, I recognize that I need to follow you. I need to be submitted to authority. But it starts, first of all, with submission to my maker. And then after that, I can have a foundation. And from that foundation, I can become a nurturer and a nurtured. And when you are nurtured, you must also give to the next generation. Ruth produced Boaz. Who produced Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. So it doesn't stop with you. It stops with the next generation to the next generation. But it takes being faithful to whatever God has called us to. And I believe that when we do that, we'll be able to nurture the next generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I know that I have spoken about my topic, but I also cannot leave here without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Yes, we may have degrees more than the thermometer. We may have degrees that are about three sentences. But I tell you, when the issues of life knock on your door, it's not your degree. It's not your knowledge. It's not even your beauty. It is the word of God. It is the presence of God. And I want to urge you this evening that to be a natural, to be nurtured, and to go into the next generation, let's do it by laying the right foundation. If the foundations be removed... What can the righteous do? Every head bowed here and every eye closed. You want to say, Lady Reverend, I know you came to talk about nurturing the next generation, but I recognize that I need a foundation. I recognize that I don't know Jesus, and I recognize that if God were to call me today, I'll not be sure of where I'll go to. Tonight, I want to give you an opportunity before I sit down. I live by the mantra, preach the word, in season and out of season. Tonight, I have brought you God's way and I've offered to you the foundation that never changes. You are here tonight. Forget about who is on your left, who is on your right. Forget about if you are in lighthouse or you are in angel's delight. The most important thing is that you must know Jesus for yourself and you must submit your life fully to him. If you are here like that tonight, it doesn't even matter if you are in the choir or you are known. Forget about how big you are. Just lift up your hands wherever you are and I'll pray for you, wherever you are seated. Give me the opportunity 
of leading you to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let your hands go high above your shoulder and give me an opportunity. that I'm a sinner that I don't know you but this evening I come to you and I invite you into my life come and be the Lord and the master of my life thank you for dying on the cross to save me and thank you for rising from the dead so that I may have eternal life and thank you that by this prayer I am now a child of God thank you for a new beginning a new foundation in Jesus name Amen I take my seat please Father thank you for this time I pray that you will continue to minister to your people I ask that we will lay the right foundation I pray also for the grace to nurture to be nurtured and to find our purpose in this life and to fulfill it before we stand before you thank you for answered prayer bless this generation and the one to come and give us wisdom to influence and to disciple in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise. 
for the newness. We pray, Father, the Lord, you will be with us as we pass through this hall, as the young ones pass through this hall, so that they will learn, as our speaker has spoken about mentoring, my God, they will submit unto mentoring in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, we pray, Father, the Lord, you will rain forth your blessings upon this hall. You will protect this hall. Send your ministry angels to encamp around this hall day and night. We pray the Lord, each and every one who passes through this hall, my God, will have a testimony. Will have a testimony. We pray for wisdom. We pray for excellence. We pray so that the Lord, even in the years to come, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, this hall will still be the best hall on this university campus. We pray for that for expansion. We pray so that the Lord, you will raise helpers, my God, even to establish the name of this hall as we, we, it is now. Thank you, my God, for those who have passed through this hall. We pray, Father, the Lord, we will continually shine wherever we are. We thank you, Father, because, Lord, you have heard our cry. We pray, Father, the Lord, you will bless each and every one who has gone through this hall and those who we pass through this hall, those who are yet, my God, to pass through this hall. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, my God, even for your strength to endure. We bless your name because there are greater things that you are yet to do even in our lives. We thank you and we give you glory in the name of Jesus. He has promised and he will never fail. Shall we all sing it as many as know how to sing it? to the Lord. We are still celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And as we wrap up and bring this Thanksgiving service to a close, we are thankful to God for such rich fellowship. None of us are leaving this place like we came. God has certainly touched our lives, blessed our lives, given us something. Amen. Amen. At this point, I want to invite our beloved Hall Warden, the affable and hard-working Dr. Eureka Adumako, and she will give us a few acknowledgments and announcements. Thank you, Reverend. Once again, shall we acknowledge Lady Reverend Howard Mills for the sermon. Our first acknowledgement, I believe, is of God. This whole evening we've been acknowledging his goodness. Let's give it to God again. You all heard the thunder earlier today, didn't you? Our God is good, and we give him all the glory. When we started to give out invitations for this program, we sent letters out to the principal officers of the university, many of whom sent us their best wishes but could not be here with us. We are privileged to have with us Madame Registrar, first female registrar of the University of Ghana, and our old lady of Walter Hall, Mrs. Mercy Hazel Asia. 
let's acknowledge her. At the time I came up here, I hadn't seen any of our provosts or deans. If you're hiding somewhere, could you give us a wave? We acknowledge you if you're here. Among the directors, we have the acting director of academic affairs. Also a lady of Volta Hall, the past warden, immediate past warden from whom I took over, Mrs. Christy Bedley. God bless you, sis. Heads of halls, we sent out letters to the heads of hall as well. I believe the head of my home is hiding somewhere. Master of Alcohol, you are welcome. We acknowledge you, Dr. James Adumako. We would like to acknowledge the chairman of the chaplaincy board, Reverend Charles M. Kibwesiako, who is here on the days with us. All our reverend ministers, did you enjoy this evening's service? Was it not powerful? Have you felt the presence of God? This has been a service extraordinaire because we decided that for the 60th anniversary service, we will have all girls of Volta Hall taking up the whole show. Every reverend minister on this program is a lady with vision and style, alumni of the University of Ghana. We acknowledge you, Reverend Vida Aqua. We acknowledge you, Reverend Grace Fletcher. Lady Reverend Adley Ward Mills, Reverend Dr. Nana Nketia, Reverend Baba Odrobwate, Reverend Agnes Phillips, my own pastor. You are all wonderfully welcome. And we acknowledge you, we love you. These are women who took up positions. Some of them are still working. Though apart from being Reverend Ministers, they have their own jobs. Lady Reverend Heward knows trained to be a lawyer. She still uses her legal brain in addition to her ministry. Um, Auntie Baba is with IRS. Forgive me if I don't know much about you. VRA. GRA. Ghana Revenue. Ghana Revenue Authority. Yes. You know. Um, Reverend Agnes Phillips runs all the way to Director, World Vision, and she's a Reverend Minister. All of them, Reverend Fletcher works with the University of Ghana, Reverend Vida has her own school. Ladies, why am I saying all this? If you go through Volta Hall, you are no ordinary woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. We acknowledge all these ladies and we thank God for their lives because their very presence God is using to nurture us, right? And we give God glory for their lives. We want to acknowledge the gramophone chorus. Thank you so much. And the sound engineers who came with them, thank you so very much. All alumni who are here, it wouldn't be the same without you. Give us a wave. All our fellows, all tutors, I'm forgetting some people, though. Forgive me. My past wardens, those I haven't mentioned, Emerita Professor Adefio Shando, 11th warden of Baltimore, hiding somewhere here, Reverend Esther Sechi Dawson. Hey, she's going to be a reverend. Professor Esther Sechi Dawson. Girls, you were waiting patiently to give me a lash. President of the Alumni Association, Miss <laughs> Doris Sansa or Mrs. Doris Sampa, whichever you want to use. Thank you so very much. Management board is on the days with me, the senior tutor. Auntie Agnes, Professor Agnes Budu is also hiding here. So the past wardings have been represented, fellows, management board have all been represented. Alumni hiding in the darkness, we salute you all fellows. Students! Yeah. Vice President, Mrs. Lydia Amamu, you 
see, it's gone so dark, and we are trying to move from here to the fundraising dinner. So forgive me. Mrs. Lydia Mamou, the Vice President of the Alumni Association, is also here with us. Mr. Apology. Finally, but not least, current ladies with vision and style. Ladies! 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 Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. We expect that you will get your tickets. We heard your cries. You say you want the ticket reduced. So, if you can get your money right after the service, it's come down to 30 Ghana cities for you. Just for you. So, we expect at least all of you there for the dinner. Wonderful. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We believe you've been blessed by this sermon. For inquiries, please call plus 233-267-6055. Plus 233-267-6055. Or send an email to info at godswordforus.com. Info at godswordforus.com. Yeah.